Merry Christmas. Merry How about that? I said, did you say Merry Christmas Eve? Uh, you could just say Merry Christmas. And I just realized that the mic's not on. I don't think. No, it's not on. Um, so you will have to. Well, you can hear me, right? Yes. Raise your hand if you can hear me. Ha ha ha. Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to this time of Christmas Eve. We are here to celebrate this service together as brothers and sisters on this interesting weekend in terms of weather. Uh, I appreciate you braving the cold and coming out and sharing in this time. Uh, there's nothing easy about this today, uh, but we are grateful to do this. We are grateful because, right, Jesus Christ is here we celebrate his birth and his coming, his return. Oh, this is good. Now, everybody should have a bulletin and a candle. And uh, if, what we're, if you've done, this is a similar service to what we've done in the past here. So um, you also, yes, we'll need access to a hymnal. We're going to go through and there will be a series of readings and songs. We'll sing a few verses. And as we get toward the end of the service, which the whole thing is right there in the bulletin, that's why you have so many, so much in the inserts. That's why the bulletin itself is so thick. Um, the whole thing is in there. You can follow right along. And as we get toward the end, yes, we'll be singing by candlelight. We're going to end up singing. And uh, our tradition is as we get to silent night, we're going to sing a couple of verses and then we're going to go outside. We're going to make our way outside as we're singing. And we'll finish singing Silent Night out there, out front. Um, we might be very, staying very close to our candles. But we're gonna, we're, we can do it. We can last for a few minutes, or a minute or two. It won't be that long. Um, okay, let's see. Anything else? We will have periods when the lights will change in, in their brightness. So it will be getting dark and bright. It, 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 It'll follow along with the story. It'll make sense once we get through it, I think. Um, but just to be aware, the lights are going to be changing in the room. Uh, we're not losing power. <laughs> we're not losing, hopefully. Hopefully not losing power. Okay. I think that's all I need to get to right now. Um, friends, we've gathered here today to worship our God, to rejoice in the gift of the love of God made flesh, the birth of Jesus our Christ. Let us join together as we embrace this opportunity with our uh, first hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful. Join with me in hymn number 133, the first three verses, and together, let us rise.
please be seated. And I'd like to invite George and Sophie to come up and help us in the lighting of our Advent wreath today. We have reached our night of expectation. The coming of Christ is here. Our hopes, our dreams, and our lives are tied to this one promise. God is with us. Let us not take this moment for granted, but renew our hopes in the Lord with the call to worship in the bulletin. The Christ is coming. Let us prepare our hearts and lives. The Christ, the Christ is, is coming, coming indeed. indeed. Let us make straight the way of our Lord. We light the first candle to signify our faithful waiting in dark, in the dark world. We light the second candle to remind us that God is working wonderful things in our everyday lives today. Our third candle shines for the love of God that holds us always close to God. We light the fourth candle to remember the peace of God that came into the world and will carry us into eternal life. But there is one more light, the greatest one of all. This is the Christ candle that is the witness that Jesus is with us, our Emmanuel. He is as much here as any of us, and we can find comfort, peace, and joy in his company. As we light this candle, we celebrate. Let us together pray the Advent prayer printed in your bulletin. Who are we, Lord God, that you should come for us? Yet you have visited our people and redeemed us in our Son. As we prepare to celebrate his birth, make our hearts leap for joy at the sound of your word, and move us by your Spirit to bless your wonderful works. We ask this for him whose coming is certain, whose day draws near, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Now we're moving into the readings and songs of this time together in worship. And if you'd like to follow along with what I'm saying, that is the rest of the bulletin. Um, at the top it says page one. This is the story of God's light coming into the world and shining through our history with a love that fills the universe with brilliance. Tonight, we remember this glorious, special, and powerful story. We have a place in this story also, so let us begin. Well, the song is actually, Oh, Come, O Come, Emmanuel. No, wait, that's not right. You know what? I got myself a little discombobulated. All right. Never mind. We're good. And Morton, I'm backing up a little bit. We're going to start with the creation of the world. The story of creation, friends, begins 
in darkness. It has always been God's plan to bring the light of creative and redemptive love into a dark, cold world. In fact, creation itself was made with this light. Genesis 1, 2 through 4 tells us, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. Our lights are small glimmers of God's story, but our lights can point us toward God's truth. The light comes into the world. Let us remember God's glory with our Advent wreath. Now, the light of God was with us, illuminating creation and sharing God's glory, but Human beings have always been quick to retreat to the shadows, avoiding exposure to such unfiltered brilliance. We too often flee the light for the comfort of darker places. Our steps draw us away from God. Our eyes struggle and weaken. God, John's Gospel states, The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his people, and his people, his own people, did not receive him. Friends, let us do better, and let us share in hymn number 88 now, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 5 through 8. You're welcome to remain seated. We have a lot of songs today, so we don't have to get up and down every time. We'll get up at the end. Hymn number 88, friends. got too ambitious there with verse 8. Friends, even though our ancestors wandered further and further from God's radiance, seeking and serving their own dim wills and diminished hearts, God did not give up on them. In God's faithfulness, God sought out Abraham and 
called him to a new way of living as a people holy to God, a light to the nations. Even when this people became enslaved in Egypt, God promised salvation. Exodus 3, 7 through 12 tells us, Then the Lord said to Moses, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I've also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. One fifteen, friends, away in a manger. <laughs> Still, friends, our rebellion, our idolatry, and our defiance of God's light darkened our path and drew our gaze from the beauty of God's design. The prophets called the people of God back into the light. Isaiah 61 through 3 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness your peoples, but the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you, and nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. 123, friends, it came upon a midnight clear, one and then three through five. Thank you.
But the people would not listen. They refused to hear. Even with such a promise, the world grew darker, colder, harsher, and more in need of God's salvation. Generation after generation waited for help for the Messiah to come. God's people found themselves lost in the world and prayed to God for light in the darkness. In the bleak midwinter, friends, number 144, the first and second verses. <clears throat> Then, out of the promise of the peoples and a divine love for all people, a young man and woman arrived in Bethlehem, a small town in the least of the tribes. The, old, the young woman was with child, and when there was no suitable place, God's living light was born. The Gospel of Matthew heralds this light in verse 416. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, and for those dwelling in the region in the shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. Surely, friends, what child is this? Hymn number 145, verses 1 and 2. Oh, mm -hmm. 
This was a light announced by angels and received by shepherds. Luke 2, 8 through 14 says, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Let us rejoice in hymn number 119, friends, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. friends this was the light that sparked the very creation itself john's gospel tells us in chapter 1 verses 4 and 5 and then 9 and 12 and 14 that in him was life and the life was the light of all people the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it the true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Let us rejoice in hymn number 134, Joy to the world, friends.
Mm. Even in the glory of God's light made flesh, the light of holy love and forgiveness and grace, the light that sparked the stars and filled the heavens with glory, human hearts became cold and rejected this miraculous, wonderful light and even sought to extinguish it. They called for its death. The entire world seemed to grow very dark with the death of our Messiah, God's own Son. And he was sealed away in the silent, dark tomb. Darkness descended on the world. Let us pray. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Come to us in our struggles, in our doubts, in our fears, and in our darkness. Do not let our lives be ruled by shadows and lies. Speak to us through the presence of your Spirit and your Word. Bless us in our union with you and nurture us as we entrust ourselves, our loved ones, and all of this world to your care. Build up our spirits in yours. Fuel our faith to shine in this time of hope and love. Rejoice in us as we rejoice in you in the grace of this moment. Help us to walk in the light of your life. Help us to live as your beautiful, bright, and blessed children. Give us steps to walk together through tomorrow and into the rest of this year. We offer this prayer in the name of our King, Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. After the darkness, a new day broke in the resurrection of God's Son. That was a, an interlude. As you receive the light, friends, yes, tip your un, try to tip the unburning candle to the burning candle. That will help us not drip too much. With the light coming to you, friends, I continue. His followers found that Jesus had given himself for them. And they found that he had shared the light of life with them. As much as the world tried, the light of Jesus was one light that could not be extinguished. Not only did this light shine again and more brightly, but this light was given to us all to show the brilliance and radiance and warmth of God was awake in us. Let us receive this light and give this gift. Join with me in our unison prayer of dedication in the bulletin, friends. As we prepare to take our light out into the world as people who will beam with our Lord and God, join with me in our prayer of dedication in the bulletin. Lord Jesus, you became our eyes so that we might see with your love. You became our hands so that we might work your healing mercy. You became our mouth so that we might proclaim your glory. You became our heart so that we might feel the passion of God. 
You became our ears so that we might hear the one in need. You became one of us so that we might live in you. As we remember your coming, hold before us the wonder of your birth and the excitement of your return. In your love and in your name we pray. Amen. Now let's join together, friends, in our conclusion with Silent Night. We will sing verses 1 and 2 and then move outside on the front porch there, on the, the front area, um, to finish singing the song together.